everybody. Welcome back to the Amici's Kitchen again where we're going to be doing our 10th week of cooking together. Um, it's been an exciting week for me. I've had a lot of people reach out about the videos um, and actually reached over 8,000 views, which I'm totally blown away. Um, so what started as something really small just kind of blossomed, but I'm not complaining. Um, the reason that I originally first started doing the videos was um, during the quarantine, we didn't really get a chance to see our customers, and I felt like we were losing contact, and I didn't want to because we built so many relationships in Amici's. So by doing the video, I was able to reach out and still let everybody see that we were here and that we're working hard. And it's just been great because not only have I stayed in touch with our regular customers, we've gained a whole new base of them. So I'm super excited. We've had people coming to the restaurant. We've had people sending us pictures of the um, finished products, and that makes me super happy. I love to cook, so sharing all this just makes it even better. So today, I gave you the recipe. We're going to be making um, lasagna rosettes. Um, actually, it's a lasagna roll. And, but the way we put rosettes is because the way we put them in the pan, it kind of looked like flowers, like rose petals. Uh, but basically, it's just going to be a lasagna sheet rolled instead of all flat like you would normally make lasagna. So I went ahead and I gave you guys the list of ingredients that you needed for today. And um, I'm going to get started because it is a little bit lengthy. So we have really graduated from just doing like four ingredients to whole dinners now. So you should be very proud of yourselves. So the first thing, the most important thing was the lasagna. And I went ahead and I cooked mine at home. Um, this was the pasta that I used, and you want to get the curly top because that's what, when we roll it, that's what's going to make that flour appearance. And it's the hard pasta. Um, in the restaurant, we have soft flour uh, pasta sheets we use. Um, in the stores, they have like the already, already baked so that you just put it in hard, but that's not going to work with this. So you have to have these. And to be honest with you, this is the longest process of this whole recipe is boiling these. So. I went ahead and I did it already because it does take a long time. It took about 20 minutes to boil these down. And I did them in a pot, and that's another hard thing. They're so big, you know, you may not have a pot that fits them all. Um, this was actually the pot that I used at home, and I did bring it with me today. This is actually an antique, and I'm just gonna let you in on a little, a little thing about this pot. Um, this is my prized possession, and a lot of people already know this, but this was my Nana's cooking pot. And um, it, it's got to be about 50 years old. So, of course, it's all weathered, and I love it. I wouldn't change a thing. And whenever I open it, it just reminds me of her, and I smell her sauce inside. And it's just such a treasured thing for me. So I cooked my lasagna in this today. Believe it or not, this was the biggest pot I had at home. So I had to put lots of oil and lots of salt in there so that they could swim around. And this is how they came out. So I went ahead and I cooled them down and flattened them out. And I put them on a cookie sheet um, for them to you know, stay kind of flat. And I layered it here with wax paper so we have some on the bottom as well. So the, the recipe only called for eight lasagna noodles and that's pretty, pretty um, small compared. There's like 16 in a box, I think. So it's basically half a box. You definitely use the whole box if you want, but you'll have to double the recipe. So, but let me tell you, one of these rolls, after it's rolled, is very filling. So it's not like you're going to sit there and you're going to eat eight of them. Although some people may. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do before anything else is we're going to get our bechamel sauce going. Now, bechamel sauce is a white cream sauce. Let me turn this on. A lot of people have been asking me what it is. It's basically butter and flour and um, milk. And that's all it is. This is two tablespoons of unsalted butter. I like to use unsalted butter for everything. <laughs> Uncle Ben said he could eat eight. <laughs> he probably could eat eight. Now he's got to make this. So lasagna rolls are so versatile, you could honestly put anything in them. If you want to do them vegetarian, you could put butternut squash. You could put... Um, uh, spinach, you could put carrots. Um, if you wanted to do them um, differently, you could put the regular bolognese sauce in them with ricotta, make them Italian. 
you could make them with chicken and peppers. There's a hundred things that you could fill these lasagna rolls with and get a different meal every day. Uh, so, okay, so the butter's nice and melted. We're gonna switch over to a spatch, uh, whisk. And you don't want the butter to burn. You don't wanna make brown butter now, because we don't want that flavor. And now we're gonna put in um, two tablespoons of flour in here. So, I'm gonna level this off, because remember, when we use these, has to be level. So I have two tablespoons of flour there. And what we're gonna do is we're going to whisk this together because we have to cook our flour. Flour is actually raw. So I'm gonna turn this down a tad bit because I forget with cooking with gas, it is so quick. Because I have the electric and it takes a million years to cook something. Okay, so we're going. We're doing this here. Now, if you didn't want to use all these and you wanted to freeze them, I would probably do it before you put all this sauce in there because this is cooking. Um, I don't know that this sauce would, would freeze very well. And this is two cups of whole milk and I have it at room temperature here because I don't want to bring down, you know, the cooking temperature here. We don't want to start all over again. Okay, and we're gonna let that sit for a minute because we all know like when you make any type of something with a flour, um, it's actually like a roux. <laughs> uh, you gotta keep stirring it because all of a sudden you'll get clumpy flour all over the bottom. So that's why I switched switch to the spatula here, whisk. Oops, sorry, oh wow, good girl. You just said it. <laughs> I know, but you're actually paying attention to me. Oh my. Well, you have your own house now, you got your own kitchen, you gotta know your own utensils, that's for sure. Okay, so we're gonna let this sit for a second and I'm gonna add in the nutmeg. Now, this is such a great flavor, I love it. And mm, it's really, really, Smells so good, but I'm just gonna add in a pinch of it. I wish I could tell you exactly the measurement, but that's gonna be up to you. But this is a traditional bechamel. Now, you could put this in between your lasagna sheets instead of ricotta if you didn't wanna use that. Um, you could put it in with your stuffed shells, your manicotte in between there. It's just like a nice creamy sauce, and the nutmeg adds such a great flavor with the cheeses and the uh, marinara sauce. Okay, so we're gonna let that sit for a minute and it's gonna thicken up. And I'm gonna show you how you can tell when it's ready in just a moment. So I'm gonna move all of these out of the way. And I have over here with the lasagna sheets, I have already some deli provolone. I mean, we have as much provolone as we want in this restaurant all the time. And we usually have prosciutto, but I went and I got deli ham. Um, this is, of course, like a low-sodium one because I don't like all that. It's just like a baked ham, and I just had it cut in slices because that's how we're going to do it. And this is the pan that we should be using. It is a, um, you would make it in a, a meatloaf in here technically, but it is a loaf pan because when you sit the rosettes up, they're high. So you want them to be covered on the sides. And if you wanted to do them, we're going to roll them this way so they're going to be standing up but you can also roll them this way and leave them flat. So then you could use a lower pan if you wanted. You just wouldn't get that flour looking consistency. Okay, so this is thickening up. This is what we want. Keep stirring. And there's a way that you show, let me get my wooden spoon here. You would stick a wooden spoon in here and if you can go like this and it stays separated then it's done. And see how it's staying separated? It's done. This isn't supposed to be like a thick gravy. Um, it's, a, it's a nice light cream sauce. It's very velvety, but the flavor is so good. If you wanted to add a little salt and pepper to it, you most definitely could, but I don't like it because it'll take away from the nutmeg taste. And to me, that's, the whole secret to this. So this 
basically just looks like a, a pot of white gravy. And we're gonna take it off the stove now and I'm gonna put it over here. Okay, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna start our actual rolling here. Abby, I forgot one thing. I need a ladle, which is right here. Okay. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to get it, but. Okay, so I went ahead and I buttered this. Um, actually, I sprayed it, you know, with just like any type of cooking spray that you wanna use because just reinforce, you don't want anything sticking on the sides. And how we're gonna start, we're just gonna put a ladle in on the bottom of the bechamel sauce, very lightly, just like that. And that's gonna make like a nice bed for the rosettes to sit in. So we're gonna take our first one here and make sure we have like, you know, the flour side up. And we're just gonna add in a couple pieces of the provolone here. Now I did this at home before and I, you know, I, I always have the pleasure of doing these things first at home and trying them out. And it was actually easier than I thought. Um, I actually went ahead and cut everything here first because that's what basically took me so long. Okay, and then we're gonna put th this in just like this. Now, if you were gonna do the vegetable one, this is when you would put the spinach or the butternut squash or the carrots or uh, bolognese or chicken. You could even make these basically Mexican with chicken or refried beans. There's, they are limitless. So the easy part now is we're just gonna roll these up just like this. Now, if you wanted a traditional lasagna roll, you would leave it like this and put it in your pan. But because we're going to flip it up like this, look how pretty it looks. It already looks like flour. So we're gonna stand it up right there in the pan. And then we're gonna get our next one. And when you let your, your lasagna, I remember my mom, you know, always making lasagna when we were a kid. And I always remember her having such a hard time with these noodles, you know, cause they do fall apart and they break and everything. So you have to leave them a tiny, tiny bit al dente. Um, but you don't want them too hard because they're not going to cook long in the oven. And you should have your oven on to about 350. And then these are going to bake in there for about 30 minutes. That's what it took me at home when I tried it. If you have a real hot oven, it's not going to take that long. You want to load these up more with more, you certainly can. But... When this is finished, yeah, that's thick. It, it's really thick, right? And they're already looking really, really pretty. So this is a super easy um, recipe. And make sure when you put your ham and stuff down that you don't go above this ridge because then it takes away from the flour. Are you eating cheese? No, no. <laughs> oh, you're gonna do one, go ahead. I keep telling her one of these days she's gonna be in front of the camera and instead of behind it. I'm good. <laughs> okay, look how nice these are coming. You should be able to fit all eight into this exact pan. Okay, let's take this one out. All right, and so. All right, so we're just gonna finish and show you the next steps here. I'm not gonna roll all eight, because I already rolled a thousand today. Because we're gonna have these as our special tonight at the restaurant. So now what you would do, you would fill up and do the, here we are again with the jet fighters. That's funny. Um, okay, so you would continue on and fill up your pan. And what you wanna do after that is you wanna take your bechamel again and you just wanna go over the top and you just wanna fill up the spaces in between the lasagna rolls, okay? And you would finish this entire thing in here and then you would top it off. Now I'm gonna show you what we're gonna to top it off with. Um, a lot of people would like maybe prefer an Alfredo sauce in here um, because they are ham and cheese. They would become out like a chicken cordon bleu type if you wanted to do that. Um, but I, I think marinara sauce like may overtake the taste of the ham and the problem. So we're going to make a parmarosa sauce. Parmarosa is very, very simple. 
why I keep hitting that one, I don't know. We were making steaks last night. Okay, and you would just take a regular, um, either jarred marinara, or if you make your own, which is what you should do, um, you put that on, is this two cups? So this is two cups of marinara. This is actually the Yumichi's, you know, marinara. You can see all the basil and the clumps of garlic in there. And you know that we all know that's Italian gold. So we're gonna get that going. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in a half a cup. This is a half a cup of heavy cream. And the reason why you wanna use heavy cream is because it makes this nice and velvety. It's an, it makes it richer. You don't wanna thin out this. You wanna enhance it. And you know, when we come to the rosa part, is that's pink. And now we have a pink sauce. This is also the base of a vodka sauce, but of course you'd have to cook your vodka off, but we're not gonna do that. This is just a Parma Rosa. And it's all flavored already. And all we have to do to this now is just sprinkle in a little bit of Parmesan cheese, which I have right here. So we're just gonna sprinkle in like a handful. We don't wanna take away from the marinara flavor, we just want to add a little bit of cheese sauce to it. Hence the Parma, Parma Reggiano. And then the pink for Rosa. So there we go. So now it's gonna taste a little bit sweeter than a normal marinara because of the heavy cream in there. Anytime you add heavy cream to something, it, it kind of balances out the flavor and adds a little hint of a sweetness to it. So after you have this all cooked, you would take, and now to finish it off, you would just take this and put this over top of your finished rolls, just like this, all around your rolls. Fill it up. Now remember, you should have eight in here. And then to top it off, we're going to put on the finished product which would be shred, the shredded mozzarella, which you needed to do. So then you put that on the top. And then after, you would put that in the oven and let me show you what it comes out like. You are not going to believe it. How about this? This was the exact same thing that I did at home. There's eight of them in here. And I filled it up with the bechamel and the pink, the pomerosa. I just put mozzarella over the top. I decorated it with some basil leaves, which are all edible. So you can definitely go ahead and um, you can eat those with it if you want to. And now I'm gonna show you what it looks like when we're gonna go eat it. And why you will not probably need to eat eight, my <laughs> brother. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you really don't even have to cut it. We could probably just go right down in here. Oh yeah. Look at that. How good does that look? And see how they're all baked in there together? Look at that creamy bechamel in here. It's so, so good. We have like all the mozzarella cheese oozing off. So now I'm gonna show you what it looks like in the inside. There we go, guys. We have a whole meal in one here. So we have the ham and the provolone all melted. And we, if you wanna serve it with a little extra pink sauce on there, go right ahead. And that's it. So we're gonna take a little taste here like I always do. I really would tell you if it wasn't good. <laughs> but it's really, really good. I have to surprise myself sometimes because some of these things I haven't made all the time, but this is really super good, guys. Try it with your families tonight. It didn't even take us long. Like I said, the longest part is, is boiling those big lasagna noodles. And this is just amazing. Your friends will be so impressed if you brought them over and had a dinner party. It's a beautiful, beautiful dish and it tastes just as good. Enjoy cooking.